Hello again, everyone. I'd like to do a reading, if I may. Uh, this is from the story slit. He squatted down and placed some books on the lower shelf of the cart. The angle allowed him to see Lynn's right breast. It was there, beyond the underside of her arm. Breasts usually are there. A sweet mound cupped by the tight blouse, its front hovering just above the edge of the desk. It would look so much better without the bra. The seams, the pattern, the stiffness, all in the way. We are back in Richard Lehman country. It's been a while, a few months, uh, after I finished my Richard Lehman overview of all of his novels. And this is going to be a two-part video of his short stories, at least all the short stories that I have. So I have this collection of fiends. There's another one, Dreadful Tales, and there are five short stories at the end of Out Are the Lights. In this first video, I'm going to talk about the stories in Fiends and the five at the end of Out Are the Lights. In the second video later on, I'll do Dreadful Tales. But yeah, like I just said, um, it's been a while I've taken a break from Lehman uh, because I devoted about nine months of my life to uh, recently to only reading him, binge reading him, and it does odd things to the brain when you binge read Richard Lehman. So I've spent the last few months doing Southern James Herbert, Bentley Little, and some other stuff. Revisiting Lehman after a break, uh, I had just had a beaming smile on my face because as that passage I just read to you, he is a very unique writer with all of his various quirks and foibles. It's been a while since I've read the word rump to describe a rear end, but I've just read it about 50,000 other times reading this one book. Yeah, graphic violence all the way. Um, very blunt in your face style. Enormous amounts of nastiness. The way I'm going to do this is it's kind of senseless to review short stories without talking about the plot. Because, I mean, some of the stories in this book are as, are as uh, short as three pages long. So what can I say about them if not to talk about the plot? So from the beginning, let me say that these are going to be full of spoilers. Otherwise, like I said, there's really nothing to say. Also because this is Richard Lehman and story is all he brings to the table. There's no like atmosphere or characterization, there are rarely any... Um, you know, pontification on themes and big ideas and stuff like that. He just he just tells a very basic story, usually he tells it very well. So if you haven't read this book and these stories and you plan to do so before watching this video, this is going to be a video aimed at people who have read this book, who have their own ideas and thoughts on these stories and just want to hear mine and compare with my own opinions. So, all right, Fiends is, uh, well, it begins with a a very touching um, introduction from his friend Dean Kuntz. I'm not going to talk about that, but it, I thought it was very warm-hearted. This was published when Lehman was still alive. And, yeah, like I said, it's just a very nice window into Richard Lehman, the man, because it seems like the man is very different to the the stuff that he writes. He seems to be a, a gentle giant, a very kind person, which often is the case, I found, with horror writers. Uh, so yeah, that's the introduction. Then we get into it. So here I in pencil, I don't know if you can see it, I've written my scores. I'm going to be grading these short stories. I don't usually mark stuff out of 10. But again, with short stories, I just think it's one way of, um, because there's so little to say sometimes, I've just given an idea of how much I enjoyed them. So Fiends consists of 100 and something page novella, and then about 10 or 12 other short stories. It opens with Fiends, the novella. Right, well, in one of my earlier reviews of Richard Lehman's novels, I don't remember which one, it might have been after Midnight, I had given a very negative review of that novel, and I, but I had ended by saying it's not the worst thing he ever wrote. And what I was thinking of when I said that was this novella Fiends. This is the second time I've read it, and it didn't get any better. This is shockingly bad. Basically, there isn't much of a story here. Um, a long time ago, when our main character was 15 years old, she was brutally raped by some guy in her home. Then, in typical layman fashion, the guy received a very lenient prison sentence, and now he's out again. And 10 years on, so she's like 25 now, she's in the cinema with her boyfriend, she looks behind her, and there he is. The man who raped her is there, leering at her. That's how we kick off, and it's it's a good way to kick it off. It's It really grabs you from the start. But where it goes from there is just a hundred pages of utter ridiculousness, silliness. Characters behave like no human beings have ever behaved, which is a criticism I've made of Lehman before, but it's never been to this degree. 
uh, there's a there's a subplot going on here of a a girl who's just turned seventeen and she's engaged to her seventeen year old boyfriend, and her boyfriend works at a bait shop by a lake and he's at the desk one day and a woman walks in and within something like 45 seconds, they don't know each other, they're having sex. And then this guy's fiance sees him doing this and for whatever reason, she's obviously very offended, she decides to just hitchhike out of town. As she's hitchhiking, each person who, well, the first guy who picks her up is a raving lunatic. She jumps out of his car, dusts herself down, sticks her thumb out again, another guy comes along. This guy apparently uh, we're supposed to think is some kind of good guy. He's a he's the hero of the book because he's he's old enough to be a dad. But he drives him straight to a motel, they check in as father and daughter, immediately have sex, um, which I believe is statutory rape in most parts of America. And that's that. So the next morning he waves goodbye to her. She's decided now to forgive her boyfriend. Off she hitch if it sounds like what I'm reciting here is batshit insane, it's because it is. I mean, I'm not... I, there's nothing I can do to tidy this up and make it seem like anything other than what it is. It's just a, a, a badly stitched together series of ridiculous violence and sex and stuff like that. Anyway, so yeah, she's um, she then decides to hitchhike back to her hometown to forgive her boyfriend, fiancé. On the way, she gets picked up by the main villain of the piece, this guy who raped the other woman. He takes her off to a cabin, ties her up, rapes her, tortures her. Ward her off a duck's back to her, by the way. None of this has any effect in her, just dusts herself off after each one. Um, you know, there's a scene, like the main woman in this, Marty, the girl who was raped at 15. Uh, Willie, that's the rapist's name, he tracks her down again, breaks into her home, beats the crap out of her. Um, he's clearly about to rape her all over again. He puts a rope around her neck. He's going to uh, string her up. I mean, there he says, uh, what's that for? Hanging you. He drops the noose over her head. Uh, tortures her a bit, psychological and physical torture. She escapes. She manages to get away from him. And as she's running out of the house, she bumps into her boyfriend, Dan. He's driving by. And Dan says, where are you going? reaching across the front seat to open the door. Now remember, 30 seconds before, this woman was on the verge of being raped and murdered by a sadistic maniac. And she says, so he says, where are you going? No place special. Can I give you a lift? Yeah, okay. Did you get my message? Because they had an argument before. Message? Guess not. I called you about 10 minutes ago. Really? No, I didn't get the message. I thought I'd drop by and you've been crying. The reason she's been crying is because 45 seconds before she had a rope around her neck was being suspended off a door and a guy, you know, a knife-wielding maniac was talking about how he was going to butcher her. You've been crying. Yeah, what's wrong? It's not because of our, he wants to say, argument. Yeah, of course it is. I was just coming over to see if we couldn't manage to straighten things out. Nice idea. I had the same thing in mind. That's what I phoned about. You must admit it's unbelievable. And then she gets in his car off they drive and instantly have sex in his apartment. It's all forgotten about that there's a maniac still in her house and her mum and dad are due home soon. So she's just going to let them face that fate without warning them of any of this. She goes to his apartment, they have sex and it's like nothing ever happened. Okay, um, yeah, so the opening novella, Fiends, is the worst thing Richard Lehman ever published. And if he, if it, if he wasn't, hadn't already been as famous as he was, there is not a chance in hell this thing would have ever seen print. It's worth reading. It's one of those so bad, it's fascinatingly good things. Um, I recommend reading it after you've read everything else by Lehman. If this is your introduction to him, you'll never read another word by him. It's terrible, and I've given it a 2 out of 10 reason it's not a one, I would never give something a zero, but the reason it's not a one is just because it's layman <laughs> and I don't hold him to much of a higher standard than this. When he does this kind of thing, this mindless violence, he, he does it at his best, he does it actually quite well and engagingly and it can be funny for what it is. This was just boring, tedious and very very stupid, so Fiends, the novella, gave it a two. Next up is the story Kitty Litter, which I have given a, a six out of ten. Uh, this is good. This is uh, a well-written piece. It's more of a joke than horror. It concerns this very irritating young girl who's bugging this neighbour of hers for one of his kittens. His cat has just given birth some kittens. She wants the one he doesn't want to give her, so he tells her a story, um, which he's obviously making up on the spot. 
And then the end of the story is a kind of ironic. It ties into the story that he's just told her. It reminded me a little bit of the short story The Open Window by the English writer who went under the pseudonym Saki. It's one of the most famous short stories ever written about a girl who very quickly makes up a story just to mess with somebody. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. It's nice. There's just not much to it. So that's why it gets a six. Next up is The Bleeder. Uh, this has a really fascinating premise. A uh, guy's just he's on the streets one day and he just sees a drop of blood on the street. Walking a bit further, he sees another drop of blood. And and it goes on like this, and he decides to follow the trail of um, of drops of blood to see where they lead. And because, again, it's a layman character, uh, he starts to concoct in his head, as he's following this trail, a story of what may have happened. And obviously it's a story of a a maiden in distress who he's going to rescue and it turns out to be nothing like that this this had more potential than it realized i think that the ending could have been a lot better i think that layman missed a trick given that at the end of the story the the main guy turns out to be injured himself and starts to run away with blood dripping i think that he layman missed a bit of a trick there to turn the story on its head and have him now being followed and pursued and another kind of story going in its own direction but it's still pretty good for what it is. I th it's just a bit anticlimactic. So I gave it a seven. A desert Pickup comes next. This is a very important piece of work because this was Lehman's first ever published work. This was published in 1970 when he was 23 or 22 years old. His first novel, The Cellar, was published 10 years later in 1980. It's very good. Um, I like it a lot. I gave it a seven just because the story is a bit slight. It's uh, quite a typical... Um, woman picks up a hitchhiker and he's not a good man well with a slight twist at the end very briefly told it's about six or seven pages long and I enjoyed it a lot I think that uh, as a first published work it's it's a good way to begin very nice little insight into how the 20 how the early 20s Richard Lehman was writing next comes the mask another similar to the bleeder fascinating premise begins great slightly anticlimactic it concerns a guy who's out walking one night a lot of layman stories begin with just a guy out walking at night and uh, he sees this woman on the other side of the road who's seem who's wearing a mask just covering her face completely he's got a veil over her face and again as with the bleeder um he starts concocting his imagination who she may be why she's dressed like this you know why does she wandering the nights like this and he starts to obsess over her and he tries to find her again and he does find her again and we find out who she is and why she does that um a very enjoyable read like i said i think that a, a writer with greater imagination could have maybe taken this in a more interesting direction but it's still a nice kind of odd romantic in some ways story so i've given it a seven Eats comes next, uh, which I've given an eight to, because uh, Richard Lehman always thought of himself as a crime writer more than a horror writer. His books very rarely use make use of the supernatural. They tend to be about just bad people doing bad things, usually to good people. And uh, this is a crime story. It's like a parody of the uh, of a of a noir noirish story. I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was creative. I thought it was funny. I thought it was. Uh, unusually very well written for him if this had been under someone's name I wouldn't have guessed this was by Richard Lehman because it, it was actually you know with all respects in the world to Lehman this was legitimately well written and uh, so yeah anyway giving it an eight I'm not actually going to say much about the plot in this one because it really does uh, rely on a, a kind of on the very last scene the very last page the hunt comes next uh, this one didn't really work for me I've given it a five out of ten because I I basically saw where it was going from the beginning and uh, it's there's not a great deal of story to this. A woman is in the lawn in doing her laundry uh, and there's a guy in a car outside who's glaring at her and there's another guy in the laundry and she says, look, I'm getting a bit nervous about this guy outside. Can you just stay with me? I don't like I'm afraid of him. And he says, well, yeah, you should be because there's a serial killer going around now. And according to the police reports and the newspaper reports, you are exactly his type. You you look like all the other girls who he's killed. Um, so, again, very good premise, but it's, it just doesn't go anywhere interesting at all. And I thought it was a bit big letdown for me. So five out of ten for that one. Slit comes next. I've given it a seven. 
Um, and I was on my way to giving it a 9 or a 10 up until the last couple of pages because this is really good. Uh, it's about a, a guy who works in a library who is clearly an, an incredibly disturbed individual. That passage I read at the start of the video is the opening to this. Um, he's perving on this other girl who's there. Now this is very strange for Lehman because he takes us inside the mind of one of his maniacs, of one of his deeply troubled characters. And he gives us a bit of backstory. We get to see a glimpse of what made him this way. This guy is basically obsessed with cutting, with, with slicing, usually women, with knives, with razor blades. He leaves razor blades around places like park benches and handrails in college campuses to watch people, hopefully he hopes young pretty women, slice their hands as they go down the stairs or slice their, their backside apart as they sit down. A uh, very sick person, and Lehman does a great, great job of, of in a very few words, in a very few pages, of uh, evoking this incredibly disturbing person. And he's obsessed with this girl who works at the library. But in the end, the last page or two, it, again, very anticlimactic. It turns out to be another one of his kind of sick teenage boy fantasies. Um, women in Richard Lehman's stories tend to behave exactly the way that twisted young teenage boys want them to behave in their fantasies. Lehman offers young teenage boys their wildest dreams. And that's what he does here. So I, I wish it had been something different in the end, but it's still, the beginning is great enough to give it a seven. Out of the Woods gets a five out of ten. It's the shortest story here. It's three pages long. It's all right. It's it's more of a, a vignette than a story. Um, it's It's also similar to Kitty Litter. It's more comedy than horror. And again, from the very beginning, I, I guessed roughly what was going to happen, what was going on. So not much to say about it. Stiff Intruders gets an 8 out of 10. This was great. Um, guy goes out to his patio one morning and sees a dead woman propped up on his chair. And rather than react with any kind of horror or mystification, he's just really put out that someone is in his chair. He just wanted to sit down and enjoy a drink in the morning, but he can't because there's a dead, beautiful young woman there. Uh, so he and his mate get rid of her, they dump her, where did they take her? They dump her outside a bank, <laughs> they steal a car, stick her in the trunk and just dump her outside a bank. She's found a few days later, it turns out she's a ballerina at a local company. The next weekend, the exact same thing happens, there's another dead woman, and, and they take get rid of her again, take her to the airport this time, dump her in a car, in a van. It turns out she's another ballerina uh, from a local company, and then the... The denouement, the, the, the final uh, reveal, is that apparently it's just some weirdo in town who's received uh, instructions from a long-dead ballet dancer that she wants her own ballet troupe in the afterlife, so he's bumping off ballet dancers. And uh, he just got lucky the first time. He, he, he dumped her off there, but when he realized that these two guys were doing the hard work for him, getting rid of him, getting rid of the bodies, he thought, okay, I'll just keep dumping him off there. I had a good time with this. It might sound a bit silly, but it's it's very funny. Uh, it's in, it's kind of intriguing, and I just loved the whole explanation of what was going on. Special comes in next, and it gets another eight. Now, most of the stories in this book started fantastically, but tapered off towards the end. This worked the opposite way. I was not drawn in at all the first one, two, three pages. I couldn't get my head around what the hell was going on. There was mention of some people called the out uh, the outlaws and the guardians with a capital G and the vampires were in there and it was just a melee of an opening everyone fighting each other, but it turned out uh, it got so much better as it went on and I just loved this story. This is this is quite an unusual take on the vampire tale. So well done for that. Eight out of ten. Joyce comes next. Another eight. Can I read the opening to this? Because again, it's classic Richard Lehman opening. Um, here's the opening. Barbara bolted out of the bedroom and straight into Darren's arms. He caught her, held her. What's wrong, he asked. What is it? Somebody under the bed. Oh, I'm sorry. Did she frighten you? It's only Joyce. Joyce? Barbara struggled out of Darren's embrace and gaped at him. But you told me you said she was dead. Well, of course she is. Do you think I would have married you if I still had a wife? It's just like I said, the brain aneurysm three years ago. But you've got her under the bed. Sure. Come on, I'll introduce you. Classic Richard Lehman opening. Um... And it, it, it has one of the funniest endings I've ever read. Uh, I've, I was thinking the other day, uh, if there's a type of death in a film or a book that I've never read about. And sure enough, this story came along. I have never before 
read about a man being beaten to death with the body parts of his ex-wife that he's been keeping for three years under his bed. Absolutely great story. The only reason I didn't give it higher than an eight uh, is because it's a tad slow. 20, it didn't need to be 20 pages long when it is just effectively a, a bit of a joke. So anyway, and we end with a good secret place, number seven. I expected it this first time I read this. I expected a bit more of it because it's got quite a um, a big reputation, this one. It's okay. Um, it I just didn't quite get why it was considered to be that much of a shocking twist. Um, I'll give it away. So it, because I said at the start, spoilers all over this. It's, you know, wh why does everything change just because it's a girl and not a boy? Didn't get it at all. And obviously, you know, it is Richard Lehman, so we get child rape and uh, and the kid just instantly recovers from it I mean, with very crude language for a 12-year-old girl. So anyway, um, yeah, it's an odd one. It's certainly an odd, weird story. I've not read anything quite like it. Uh, and it's So I'll give it a seven just to round it off. All right, so Fiends, that's that. And as for the five stories in Out Are the Lights, so the first one is called mess hall oh well i don't need to do that i can just do it from here first one is called mess hall um didn't do it at all for me i've given it a four out of ten it's uh the the, the basic idea is is good it's funny a serial killer who ends up getting his comeuppance from the zombies of his former victims but um the way that it's told it's just it's it's really too long for what it is 25 pages and it's just a lot of violence, a lot of torture porn, a lot of graphic sex. And it's, in a way, it's similar to his early novel, The Woods Are Dark. It does involve, again, woods, people being tied up to trees and all the kind of horrible things happening to them. Um, but yeah, unoriginal. And because I've read every word, almost every word Richard Lehman's ever written, it's nothing at all new for me here. It's just 25 pages of violence. Didn't like it. Four out of ten. Dinker's Pond, uh, I've given an 8 to this. I enjoyed this. This reminded me of Savage because it's, again, it's set in the American West. It's got a similar kind of style to it, a similar tone. I enjoyed the story very much. Um, I like it when Lehman does something different, when he pushes himself as a writer. And like I said, this would have worked effortlessly if it had been just uh, one of those random short story type things it would drop into his novels. If he'd put this into Savage, my favourite novel of his, it would have been seamless. It would have fit perfectly. So... Excellent one. Madman Stan is a funny little take on the uh, horrible babysitter story. Two boys being babysat by this grumpy curmudgeon of an old woman. And she tells him a story about a serial killer called Madman Stan. And it ends up getting turned on her. Uh, Bad News, I gave it a 5 out of 10. Didn't like it. It's, it's a creature feature, kind of. It's, um, I thought it was going to be a bit like his novel Flesh, because the creature in it is described as quite similar to that what glistening fleshy tube thing that was we we can have we can have it in that book but it isn't i mean it was just a, a bit boring to me so gets a five the tub gets a nine uh it's his from the two books i've been talking about today it's his best short story it's sick it's twisted it's amusing it's got a an unexpected ending um absolutely fantastic short story the the best of richard layman that one the best what he does did it great. Le Lehman has a kind of a limited box of tricks, but everything within that box of tricks is tends to be in a league of his own. And uh, this story illustrated it for me. Right, this has been a very long uh, video. Sorry about it. But so that's going to be part one. Fiends and Out Are the Lights. And I'm working my way through the stories in Dreadful Tales. So hopefully I'll be back pretty soon with a review of this book. Until then, thanks for watching this. If you did watch it to this point, take care of yourselves and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now, everybody.